What is going on everybody? What is going on the catch fam? My name is John Dawson and in today's video we are hopping into another 2022 fantasy football mock draft. In today's video we will be conducting a 10 team mock draft from the 10th overall selection through the Yahoo platform. If you guys do enjoy today's content be sure to hit that like button on the way and hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. If you guys have any mock draft requests, please let me know in the comments down below. And of course, let me know what you guys think of today's mock overall. Be sure to join our Discord down below to get our personal mock draft invites and updates on when we are drafting as well as mock drafting in general. And without further ado, let's hop into another 2022 fantasy football mock draft. All right, so when it comes to these 10 team drafts overall, I'm really liking the method of switching between the running back and the wide receiver position essentially all the way throughout the draft and then just allowing a good value quarterback and tight end fall to us in some of the mid to later rounds so we'll be keeping an eye on certain tier or two of tight ends overall as well as a certain tier or so of quarterbacks overall throughout this draft will kind of let the first round play out here before we start thinking about that 10th overall selection and the first selection in the second round. So far, we've got JT, Austin Eckler, JJ, Christian McCaffrey, and Cooper Cup off of the board. For me, overall, I'd like to land. I mean, I love Devontae Adams as a wide receiver one. I think if Stefan Diggs is sitting there, he's certainly a great wide receiver one. If Jamar Chase falls out for any reason, he'll definitely go Chase, but I doubt he will. Looking at the running back position in that area, I love Joe Mixon or Najee Harris. I think they're both great RB1s to start our squads out with. So we'll just continue to let this thing play out. We see uh, Dalvin Cook and Derrick Henry off the board. We've got two more selections in front of us. Najee Harris gone at eight overall. And I mean, we're relatively close to Jamar Chase falling out here, but I've got a feeling he goes at nine and he certainly does go at nine overall. Not a big surprise there. So I love Stefan Diggs overall, but... I'll take Devontae Adams by a hair here, and then we'll start with our RB1 as Joe Mixon. I'm perfectly happy with that start. We start things off with a solid wide receiver one in Devontae Adams and a solid running back one in Joe Mixon. So you could have easily gone Stefan Diggs there. I don't mind Diggs as a wide receiver one on a roster whatsoever. CeeDee Lamb, excuse me, and Mike Evans, probably the next best selections. In terms of running backs, I probably like DeAndre Swift the next most looking at players available, but Aaron Jones ranked a little bit higher through Yahoo is perfectly fine in that kind of top tier, but I'll go Joe Mixon all day long as our RB1. All right, so Travis Kelsey, our first tight end off the board with the third selection in the second round. Stefan Diggs off the board, so we'll just kind of sit back and let this second round and most of the third round play out. I don't get too excited in terms of what players may or may not be around we got quite a while until that 30th overall selection so we see cd lamb and saquon barkley gone so really like i said when we get to that 30th overall pick we want to go receiver and then at 31 we want to land another running back and although i said it's going to be a while until we pick i don't know why don't we just go ahead and take a look at who may be available so tyree killer michael pittman were kind of in between that tier uh, i doubt tyree kill will be around but if he is i'll go hill i don't mind that selection whatsoever but if he's not available i love keenan allen in that tier i like aj brown as well but i've really been targeting devonta smith in later rounds overall so i'll probably go with keenan allen uh but if i want to go for a high ceiling maybe go mike williams right looking at running backs who may be available around in that tier i mean we'd love to see kamara javante williams fall out but honestly james connor ranked a little bit lower back overall when it comes to yahoo's rankings and i really don't mind uh, James Conner as an RB2 whatsoever. So maybe based off of these rankings, we can land Conner, but in our subscriber mock drafts, Conner is not going that late whatsoever. So maybe if we do land him, we put a little bit of an asterisk overall. All right, so Saquon Barkley is gone. Debo Samuel, DeAndre Swift, Leonard Fournette, and Nick Chubb. Tyree Kill off the board and Keenan Allen is gone. No longer a player we can consider here at the next turn. So like I said, you don't want to get too excited looking ahead when you've got like 15 selections in front of you before you draft again, but it is good to kind of play out some scenarios, I suppose. All right, Alvin Kamara off of the board. Still no quarterbacks gone as we move into the third round and we'll just kind of start that tier overall at the quarterback position. So through Yahoo's rankings, you've got Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Herbert, Mahomes, and Joe Burrow ranked as your top Five, I like to go out and try and get a guy like Jalen Hurts 
or just kind of wait for that later tier and maybe pair a Trey Lance with a Derek Carr uh, if you do not hit on one of those top guys. I think Kyler Murray being ranked a little bit lower is not necessarily a bad thing. And once again, a player that you could potentially stack with a Trey Lance or a Derek Carr. We'll look at the tight end position in just a few moments here. L looking at things, James Conner is off the board. So like I said, I'd be surprised even though he's ranked that low through Yahoo if he does fall out to us at 30 overall. And like I said, it wouldn't necessarily be realistic either. So uh, Mike Evans gone, AJ Brown gone. Let's take another look here. We've got uh, Mark Andrews hanging around if we wanted to go tight end here. But really for me, I want to snag up another running back. I mean, it is already drying up like crazy. The position is just so, I mean, it just gets drafted so heavily to start off 10 and 12 team drafts and even eight and 14 for that matter. So Cam Akers gone here. Let's take one more look at receiver. We've got a couple good options. I mean, Michael Pittman's probably my favorite player available, but Mike Williams really brings that just nice weekly potential ceiling. DJ Moore, Scary Terry, Jalen Waddle, all perfectly fine selections here. Let's go Michael Pittman for the sake of today's mock draft. And then really, I think Ezekiel Elliott is probably the best available Running back, I don't have an issue going out and drafting the Zeke Elliott. I've been talking about him all offseason long. I really don't necessarily get all the hate on Zeke. I think his ADP is appropriate, but I don't think he is necessarily a running back to cross off your boards. If I didn't go Zeke here, I'd probably make a move for Travis Etienne. But let's go ahead. Let's take Zeke off the board as our RB2. We'll start things off with Devontae Adams, Joe Mixon, Michael Pittman, and Zeke. I think it's a great start to this roster. All right. Josh Allen is gone with the second selection in the fourth round. So we do see our first quarterback off the board. Scary Terry then selected with the next overall pick. Let's take a look at the tight ends, right? Mark Andrews still floating around. I'm not too crazy in 10 team leagues about going out and targeting Mark Andrews or Travis Kelsey, but I will say that Mark Andrews at the end of the third, beginning of the fourth is pretty good value overall. But for me, I'd rather go for a guy like Dalton Schultz or Dallas Goddard. And if I wanted to pair them with somebody, maybe a Dawson Knox or a Hunter Henry as well. But really, Goddard's kind of my top candidate in terms of a mid-round tight end who could break out on the year. So I'll probably target Goddard overall in this draft. And if we do not land Goddard, I still think there's plenty of good value later on. We'll also keep an eye on George Kittle. I mean, I really just love the ceiling that he brings on a weekly basis. And if he's available at the right price, we'll go ahead and take him off the board. So Travis Etienne does go just two selections after we considered him a little bit against his ADP, which I'm completely fine with. Mark Andrews is off the board. Antonio Gibson does go in the fourth round here and Mike Williams as well as DJ Moore. So some pretty good receiver value here in the fourth round. We've got two more selections until that fourth round wraps up and we move into the fifth. And really for the fifth round selection and the sixth round selection, we're just going to continue this strategy get another receiver another running back and then as we move into the seventh and eighth we can at least start to consider a quarterback or tight end we'll kind of just let each position fall to us at the right time and really at the end of the day i love this strategy because it allows you to not panic right you're just going out you're stacking up with wide receivers and running backs you're going to see other members of your fantasy leagues kind of panic when a quarterback or tight end gets selected I and mean, we saw josh allen Go at the beginning of the fourth. Now we're seeing Patty Mahomes and Justin Herbert go in the fifth. And I guarantee you're going to have a lot of fantasy managers at that point. Even with our fourth tight end off of the board now, you're going to see fantasy managers start to kind of panic at quarterback and tight end. And they almost start to follow that train when really there's probably better value at running back and receiver hanging around and still pretty solid value at quarterback and tight end at later points in the draft. I'm not saying to necessarily disregard quarterback or tight end, like they don't matter. And don't get me wrong, having that high value player like a Justin Herbert or a Mark Andrews at each position, right, is going to go a long ways throughout the season. But I would rather personally just continue to stack up at running back and at receiver. And I really do find that you can still find really good value at quarterback and tight end and those mid rounds overall. All right, so looking at the fifth round here, we got Patty Mahomes, Justin Herbert, Kyle Pitts, Eli Mitchell, Juju, Brees Hall, Darren Waller, and Cortland Sutton off the board. One more selection until we select here. And we do see J.K. Dobbins taken off the board. So let's take a look at the available wide receivers. I love D.K. Metcalf. I also like Allen Robinson here. I think they're both really solid selections. So let's go ahead. I mean, I don't really care if it's against ADP. I think Metcalf is gonna have a great year. In terms of targets, I think they're going to be there on a consistent basis. I'm not too worried about the quarterback play 
Uh, personally, if I didn't go Metcalf, there would probably be Allen Robinson just because I think he kind of brings a, you know, he kind of has that potential breakout uh, season under wraps moving to the Rams offense. I'm going to go AJ Dillon here. I don't mind Monty. I don't mind Josh Jacobs, but AJ Dillon has just become a player that I really want on my fantasy rosters and having him as an RB3, I think will be an absolute blessing overall. So like I said, I like Allen Robinson as a potential breakout player. I also love Deontay Johnson in that spot. If I didn't go Metcalf, as much as I like Robinson, I listen, I'm really not worried about Deontay Johnson's season. I mean, this is your wide receiver eight in full PPR last season. I, I'm not worried. I mean, it's it's not like Ben Roethlisberger was playing lights out football last year, although he did have a great personal chemistry with Deontay Johnson. So I think he's a really good value there. I think Jerry Judy also has a potential breakout receiver type label going into the season. I like Hollywood Brown there, and there's certainly an argument to make for Gabe Davis. So moving in to the next coming rounds, we've got the seventh and the eighth round coming up. We'll see who's available at running back and at receiver. Generally speaking, once I've landed three running backs, I like to let this next kind of tier, I mean, unless Josh Jacobs falls out, I like to let this tier by like Damian Harris, Devin Singletary, Miles Sanders, kind of dry up and this is a little bit different from some of the other rankings and some other platforms you've got like ceh a little bit higher even tony pollard and kareem hunt and i mean i like some of those players but i'm really going for guys like rashad penny especially after the news of kenneth walker going to have a hernia surgery i still like chase edmonds and full ppr but even past that i really like guys like daryl henderson james cook damian pierce and even tyler algier as just good solid late round running back value so more than likely let's go ahead and take a look at the draft board here uh we do see two more quarterbacks selected in the sixth round lamar jackson and jalen hurts so Allen robinson monty deontay johnson both those qbs judy josh jacobs chase edmonds brandon cook ch and gabe davis as we move into the seventh round so it might be a good idea to go ahead and take a look at the quarterback position i think if we can land burrow or kyler murray there uh both are great values, right? As we approach the end of the seventh, going into the eighth round. But if we miss out on either of those quarterbacks, I'll probably wait one more round to go QB. And I don't even mind just going out and targeting Trey Lance and Derek Carr ahead of their ADP at the same time. But I will say Trey Lance is probably the top quarterback going against his current ADP. In some platforms, you're seeing Jalen Hurts go a little bit higher overall against his ADP as well. But through Yahoo's, they've got him. Uh, kind of appropriately ranked so to speak so we'll take a look here we'll let things continue to play out a big run at tight end going on here with dalton schultz and dallas goddard gone so we have kind of missed that top tier of tight end so to speak uh for me personally that means i'm just gonna be going out and targeting dawson knox and trying to pair him with hunter henry or zach Ertz. i mean i think there's still plenty of good value here so burrow's gone brady's gone tyler murray's gone so Devin Singletary is gone, right? Let's just take a look. Because now most teams have a starting uh, quarterback. So I like Darnell Mooney here. Let's take another receiver. Uh, and unfortunately, we've got three players on the same bye week, including two of her receivers. But we'll survive. Like I said, running back, I think we can hold off around. So do we want to go tight end here? Dawson Knox still floating around. Or do we want to go QB? For me, I think you can go either way and still land good value, right? And here's an argument. Do you like TJ Hawkinson or Dawson Knox more? I like Dawson Knox more. So give me Knox here. And we're playing. I mean, like the other move to make there is to go ahead and just snag up Trey Lance, uh, which I don't mind. But at the moment, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight teams with a quarterback. Only one team with a uh, no quarterback so far. So there's still a solid chance that we can land Trey Lance in this draft. But at the same time, there is a chance that another team wants a second quarterback or they want uh, Trey Lance as that kind of bench quarterback behind a veteran or someone that they have faith in. So we'll see what happens here. We'll continue to let this thing play out. Probably going into the next round, we'll either draft a running back or receiver and one of those quarterbacks overall. So let's take a look at who's available at the receiver position. At this point in the draft, I love Elijah Moore. Love Adam Thielen. I think Ayuk has some great upside as well. Uh, Hunter Renfro and Devonta Smith, those are probably my two favorite late round values in fantasy drafts right now. Chris Godwin is so inappropriately inappropriately ranked, excuse me, and Yahoo it blows my mind. I mean, he is going way later than 87 overall. 
Uh, and I get it. He's probably going to miss time. He's going to miss one week. He's going to miss four. He's going to miss six. I don't know, right? And uh, maybe he should be pushed back if we get a timeline that's closer to four to six weeks. But still, I mean, he's a steal art where he's going in Yahoo's uh, ADPs. And realistically, he's not going to go that late in a lot of mock drafts. So love Godwin here. Love Christian Kirk. I love DeAndre Hopkins. Even if Hopkins and Godwin are going to miss time to start the year, think about the value they bring to your roster later down the stretch, especially during playoff time. All right. I love Tyler Boyd. And I love Traylon Burks. I like Chris Olave a lot as well. So plenty of talent left at wide receiver, right? And really, when we look at this roster, we got one, two, three, four receivers already. One, two, three, four bench spots. So, you know, we don't have a lot of room on this roster if we wanted to go with a double QB build. We don't have a lot of room if we wanted a second tight end behind Dawson Knox. So we probably have to eliminate one or the other. I think going into a 10 team redraft, format for me it's probably eliminating a second tight end i have a lot of faith in dawson knox i know some people out there don't due to the hand injury but i think knox is going to be just fine so looking at the ninth round we do see chris godwin gone so like i said not a player who's going to go that late in mocks and really in the ninth round even in a 10 team format i really in subscriber mocks he's going far far earlier than that so We'll kind of continue to let this play out. Let's see, what, where's that team with one or with no quarterback? They went Russell Wilson. Um, so we've got a solid chance of landing the quarterbacks we want here. But uh, the way Trey Lance's name is being floated around the fantasy community, I won't be surprised if someone wants to pair him behind like a Tom Brady or Joe Burrow, for example. So we'll see what happens here. And we'll kind of just sit back and let this thing play out. Let's take a look at running backs. Like, I still think we can land some good value at running back. Uh, at the next turn overall so i think we either go double qb here or we go qb wide receiver and that might do it for the wide receiver position so we got Devonte adams michael pittman dk metcalf and darnell mooney so let's take a look because we've got two of those wide receivers on a week 14 bye we just want to make sure we don't land another wide receiver with the same bye week and i love hunter renfro here i like elijah Moore, like brandon Ayuk. Uh, but I think Devonta Smith is my guy here. Uh, I love Hunter Renfro probably equally, but we've already got Adams on this team. So maybe to not saturate too much, so to speak. So let's go Devonta Smith and then let's go quarterback and let's take Trey Lance off the board. And I love the start to this team, man. Trey Lance, Devonte Adams, Michael Pittman, Mixon, Zeke, Dawson Knox, DK Metcalf, AJ Dillon, Mooney, and Devonta Smith. So really with these last three selections, I am probably going to go with a two quarterback build. And the guy for me is Derek Carr. I mean, I really think Carr is a great value overall. I want to like make that clear. But also, I, I just love the idea of, first of all, stacking him with Devontae Adams on this team. But also just having a solid veteran quarterback to play just in case Trey Lance has some inconsistency throughout the season. So I think that's a great build. And then outside of that, we probably need to go double running back. Uh, and for me, looking at the available running backs, uh, I love James Cook. Love my guy, Hendo. I would consider James Robinson. Uh, Damian Pierce is probably a player that I feel like I, I have to draft in this draft overall. Uh, Tyler Algier is another name that I absolutely love as a late round value. So I think we've got plenty of good options to throw on our bench here behind AJ Dillon, Zeke, and Joe Mixon. I think a great build overall for this team. The one other thing too, consider here is maybe a second tight end if i went with a second tight end it's definitely hunter henry but like i said in a 10 team redraft format nah, i don't necessarily know if we need to go with a second tight end right if you're really concerned about dawson knox as a player then maybe that's the move but overall i think more running back depth and a veteran consistent quarterback to pair behind lance he also has i mean let's face it Derek Carr has some upside going into the season plus let's say him and adams are bringing that consistency in the red zone on a week-to-week -week basis then uh, we're gonna great have a great stack overall as well so we'll just target our quarterback and uh two running backs and a kicker in defense and we'll call this thing a day all right so as we approach the end of the 11th we see aaron Rodgers and matthew stafford off the board Eh, make it, maybe making me slightly nervous that we don't land Derek Carr. And if we don't, it's not the end of the world, right? Hey, we could just go into the season with just Trey Lance. Oh, there goes Derek Carr. We get sniped. We just miss him. So that's okay, right? There's two ways to look at this. We could just go in the season, you know, fully confident in Trey Lance, which plenty of fantasy managers are. Or we could go with Captain Kirk Cousins. And I mean, oh, and there goes Cousins. He's off the board. So, hey, we just drafted a team that is 100% uh, 
dependent on Trey Lance, and I think that's perfectly fine. So uh, give me James Cook at the running back position. And now that we have that extra spot, hmm, give me Damian Pierce. Let, let's load up our running back, but DeAndre Hopkins is a would be a great, a great, and he gets selected there. I was about to say, we may just go DeAndre Hopkins there and get an additional receiver. But looking at this build, we've got one, two, three, four, five receivers. We've got one, two, three, four, five running backs. So really that last spot, right? I would rather, you know, as much as Hopkins would have been a nice addition, then we're kind of sweating to see if we do land Damian Pierce at the end of this draft or not. And really, he's the one player that I really wanted out of that bunch. And if we did land both, uh, Hopkins and Pierce in this build will look great, but I'd rather just lock up those two running backs. That's what's most important to the squad overall. And then now with that final selection, we can kind of do whatever we want, right? We could go with a Tyler Boyd. We could go with the second tight end and Hunter Henry. Uh, I think both of those are great options. Looking at available running backs, outside of Tyler Algier, there's really no one that I, want, I would want to pick. But really, when we look at this team, we've got Zeke, we've got Joe Mixon, we've got AJ Dillon, we've got two rookie running backs already in James Cook and Damian Pierce. So I don't know how much I want to make a move for a third rookie running back on the squad. So Looking at available receivers, I think Tyler Boyd is hands down my guy, but I like the potential upside in Traylon Burks. I, I don't think he's a bad dart throw. If we wanted to go with an additional quarterback, we could. I mean, you really have your pick here, right? Justin Fields, Tua, Trevor Lawrence, Matt Ryan, Danny Dimes, Jared Goff, James Winston, Mac Jones, Tannehill wins, Mariota, take a big gamble on Deshaun Watson. Like, there's an argument for any of these quarterbacks to be selected, but I think with this build, we just go into the season happy with Trey Lance as our starter. Uh, and trust me, there are plenty of fantasy managers who are that high on Trey Lance that they are selecting him as a QB1. Me personally, I do like kind of a veteran quarterback behind him. So let's say we went with Derek Carr and Trey Lance and at the end of the ninth and the beginning of the 10th there, right? Then we probably missed Devonta Smith. Looking at receivers drafted after Smith, uh, where we drafted next week, could have still landed DeAndre Hopkins or Chris Olave. So it's a little bit of a note to make if we wanted to go a little bit more aggressive and stack up at quarterback at the end of the 10th and beginning of the 9th. All right, into the 13th, we do see Hunter Henry gone. So he is no longer an option for us. I'm starting to like the idea of going after uh, Traylon Burks for our final player. I mean, I think when we look at this roster, like we've got some pretty consistent receivers in Adams, Pittman, Metcalf, Mooney, and even Devonta Smith. So I think just taking that kind of a gamble, kind of, you know, roll the dice on a rookie like Traylon Burks could probably pay off for this team. So we've gone over a couple of different scenarios on how to end out this draft and really on how to end out these couple of rounds. And I mean, there's always an argument to be made in a couple of different directions. So I think regardless, we built a great roster today. Trey Lance at quarterback, Dawson Knox at tight end, Devonta Adams, Michael Pittman, Metcalf, Mooney and Devonta Smith at receiver, running backs Mixon, Zeke, AJ Dillon, James Cook, and Damian Pierce. And yeah, I think it's a great look, looking squad overall. All right. So 13th round wrapping up, we are selecting in one more pick. So really for me, it's Tyler Boyd or Traylon Burks, but I think Burks maybe brings some potential upside in comparison to Tyler Boyd, who even though Boyd is a great handcuffed, so to speak, to guys like Higgins and Chase. God forbid anything happens to them. And also just very consistent in terms of his play style and full PPR. Uh, I think we'll go Traylon Burks here. We'll go for some upside. And then let's just pick the best available kicker or defense. For me, really, like if you're having to choose, like, you know, we're picking at 131 and we don't pick again until 150. I think you just go kicker. I'm going to go with Danny Carlson. Here's your kicker number one in fantasy last season. And then uh, you can always stream defense. So really, uh, we'll just pick the best available defense with the final selection of this draft, and we'll call this thing a day. All right, moving into the end of this draft, your final round here, we've seen Raheem Mostar, Greg Joseph, the Saints defense, Denver's defense, Alexander Madison, and the Rams defense off the board. So looking at available defenses, I think Philly's worth a shot here. New England probably as well. Philly a pretty easy schedule overall to start the season. Pittsburgh, you've always got a chance with that front seven. Cleveland, a really good streaming option to start the year, but then after that, it gets kind of shaky. So uh, New England not looking so good on paper in terms of their defensive squad. 
but I do trust this system and it is a system that has kind of consistently delivered in fantasy football. So we'll just go New England's defense and we could always stream on a weekly basis, maybe even drop one of these players and pick up the Browns defense as we move into the year. All right, so let's take one final look at the team and then we'll finish off today's video. So Trey Lance at quarterback, and Dawson Knox at tight end. I would have liked a double QB build here with the Derek Carr on the bench. And I would have considered a second tight end behind Dawson Knox, but I'm not too incredibly worried about Knox as a whole. In a 10 team format, you can probably still find someone out there throughout the year to help on the waivers. Uh, but like I said, Derek Carr behind Trey Lance would have made me feel really, really confident about this squad. But at the end of the day, we get an additional wide receiver on this team with some upside in Traylon Burks since we did not land Derek Carr. So receivers, we've got Devontae Adams, Michael Pittman, Metcalf, Mooney, Devonta Smith, and Traylon Burks, a great wide receiver room. Overall, I think there's a lot of consistency and there's some nice upside with that receiver room as well. Running backs, we got Mixon, Zeke, AJ Dillon. Dillon really becoming my favorite RB3 to target for fantasy rosters. And in some deeper leagues, I don't even mind him as an RB2. James Cook and Damian Pierce, we've got two youthful running backs, two rookie running backs on our bench as well. And I think they're both great values where we drafted them. So I think it's a great squad overall. Finished it out with Daniel Carlson at kicker and the Patriots defense. So I think another great draft is in the books. If you guys did enjoy today's content, be sure to hit that like button down below. Hit that subscribe button if you are new to the channel. We put out free daily fantasy football content. And at the moment, we are running a free subscriber mock draft nearly every single night on the channel. Be sure to let me know in the comments down below what you guys thought of today's mock and if you guys have any questions pertaining to the 2022 fantasy football season be sure to drop those down below as well and that'll do it for the video with that i'll say thank you guys so much for watching and or listening and remember you saw it here on the catch